Hey, it's good to be here. Um, again, I always say that, but it is. It is good to be here. Uh, tonight, we're going to be in a section of the book of Mark that I'm, I probably mentioned this last time, but it it's a bit of a digression. It's a space where Mark tells us the backstory of what is going to explain Herod's fear and stuff like that. But I'll read it in a second, but I just want you to know that the next couple of classes are going to be mostly history. It is interesting, and it has a, it comes to an interesting end, and uh, we'll talk about it all, but I just want you to know as we get into this, and I don't have anything particular to tell you that I can think of. No, I don't. I'm, Tim's fine. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Um, we're going to start reading in a second in verse uh, 17, and I'll read the whole section, even though I, I, we probably won't get that far, but uh, and tonight. Let me pray for us. Lord, I pray that you'll give me focus and uh, that what we learn as we look at these things will, while most of it, Lord, is just the history that you felt we should know, and so you made certain that it was in the text, in the scripture, and we call it your word to us, and so let's let us go after these passages in that uh, spirit that you wanted us to know these things and that it is in some way instructive to us. And so I thank you for the opportunity to study your word and pray that you'll bless this time. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, um, we had just last week done the part where there were these notions about who Jesus was and that was he a John the Baptist raised from the dead or was he a prophet or all and Herod had said in verse 16 it said when Herod heard about Jesus he said John the man I beheaded has come back from the dead and then we read this in verse 17 for Herod had sent soldiers to arrest and imprison John as a favor to Herodias this is his wife. She had been his brother Philip's wife, but Herod had married her. John had been telling Herod, it is against God's law for you to marry your brother's wife. So Herodias bore a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But without Herod's approval, she was powerless. For Herod respected John, and knowing that he was a good and holy man, he protected him. Herod was greatly disturbed when he talked with John, but even so, he liked to listen to him. Herodias's chance finally came on Herod's birthday. He gave a party for his high government officials, army officers, and the leading citizens of Galilee. Then his daughter, also named Herodias, came in. Oh, by the way, there should be a note that they don't know that her name was Herodias, but that's neither here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, came in and performed a dance that greatly pleased Herod and his guests. Ask me for anything you like, the king said to the girl, and I will give it to you. He even vowed, I will give you whatever you ask up to half my kingdom. So she went out and asked her mother, what should I ask for? Her mother told her, ask for the head of John the Baptist. So the girl hurried back to the king and told him, I want the head of John the Baptist right now, on a tray. Then the king deeply regretted what he had said. But because the vow, of the vows he had made in front of his guest, he couldn't refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner to the prison to cut off John's head and bring it to him. The soldier beheaded John in the prison brought his head on a tray and gave it to the girl who took it to her mother. And when John's disciples heard what had happened, they came to get his body and buried it in a tomb. Uh, this is one of those passages that, um, the way the NLT puts it together is fine, uh, that someday when I have a lot of time, 
I'm going to retranslate the, the New Testament. How's that sound? We'll start with this, uh, this section because there's so much going on in the Greek that's not there or that they're trying to make it clear. I just want you to know I'm going to have to tell you that stuff because it just makes the story even more come alive. But it starts, we're getting the backstory of why Herod was afraid that John the Baptist had come back as Jesus. The text actually begins, the Greek actually begins, for himself, Herod, sending, seized John. That's all it says. For himself, Herod, sending, seized John. Now, the purpose beginning like for himself, it's really clear to me that it, it, it's to make sure that we don't blame anybody but Herod himself himself the purpose of that is to let us know that he is always in control in some manner during this whole episode now he's weak-willed at points and you can see problems with him and all through this it's all in there but i just want you to know that herod himself is the reason that john had his head cut off because he could have controlled that whole situation differently if he'd wanted to but what we have to be careful about is ever giving him any excuses. He doesn't even do it. He says, I beheaded him, and he's come back. He's, he takes the blame. But this is why he is so guilt-ridden, because he knew he did the wrong thing. He made the wrong decision, and we'll see that later. Um, there's been a lot of speculation about the source of this information. Like, how does Mark know about this stuff. I mean, how would Peter know about this stuff? They certainly weren't in Herod's house to hear these things and to see these things. And interestingly, to me, it's that this story has far more of a touch of an eyewitness to it than a lot of stuff in the, in the Bible. I mean, it's got quotes and it's got clarity on who's in the room and it's it's got all kinds of stuff about it that sounds like somebody was there and i'm just going to say that it it's cool that the bible tells us that two people two people had great access and connection to herod at this time we find out in luke 8:3 that a woman named Joanna, who was the wife of Chusa, Chusa was the business manager. He in charge of everything that had to do with Herod's household. He was in charge of everything. And his wife, Joanna, was a contributor to Jesus and a follower of Jesus. When it lists the women, it says Joanna, whose husband was Chusa, who was the business manager for Herod. I am confident that Mr. Business Manager came home from that night at the palace after the big party that he'd have had to be in charge of making sure it all happened well. And he said, honey, you'll never guess what just happened tonight and tells her the story. And then in Acts 13, 1, we learn that a guy named Menean, Menean, he is called not only a follower of Jesus, but a prophet and a teacher in the church of Antioch. And it says that he grew up with Herod as one of his childhood friends. And if Herod's having a birthday party, Chances are, Menean would have been invited because he would have been a friend and Herod would have invited. And I'll bet he too saw the whole thing and went home and said, honey, you'll never guess what happened tonight at Herod's place. He had John the Baptist's head chopped off because a little girl danced for us all and it got him go. I mean, you can hear it. And so what do we have in the New Testament? Two witnesses who are named, who have direct connection to Herod. And how many witnesses does it take to say that something's absolutely true in the, in the first century in the Jewish world? Two. We've got them. So I'm confident, and I know I went a long way on that, but here's the deal. 
A lot of, a lot of commentators speculate because we get this story in two places, one in the scripture in Mark and one in Josephus, which is later, and they are different in some details. Not much, but they're different. But the point is that lots of commentators want to go, well, you know, Mark just made this up just to fill out his story in some way and to make Herod look worse or something like that. But the truth is, we got two people that we can say were probably witnesses to these events, and we can be pretty sure that they happened just as they were recorded. Now, I say all that, I say all that, that um, let you know that Josephus says that the reason that Herod, this is, this is where the only real big difference is, Josephus says that the only reason that he had John in prison came from the fact that Herod was fearful of John getting too popular and that he might start a rebellion. Um, it could be true. It, it could be true that, well, actually, it probably is. You know, Mark makes it very clear that Herod was worked up because of a family issue. So we've got these two things going. We've got John is out there getting a big crowd around him. He's telling Herod that he shouldn't have married his brother's sister or brother's wife, and we'll get to the details of that in a minute. But there's like foment, and the last thing that the Romans want is people to be worked up. Herod knows that if there's going to be any trouble for him, it's going to come from the people in his realm, making the Romans have to come in and settle things. And so the last thing that he wants is John the Baptist getting a rebellion going. He's afraid anyway because he's Herod, and the people don't like Herod. They're the family, he's a Herod, and he, because that's the family's last name, really. But they're all... And so it could be, Josephus could be right about that, that there was a political reason. But there's also this business of Herodias being angry that John the Baptist is pointing out that she should not be married to Herod Antipas. Um, here's the thing. It says, Herod sent soldiers to arrest and imprison John as a favor to Herodias. That really leans into the fact that it's all happening because Herodias was just done with John talking about how they shouldn't have gotten married. We'll, t we'll get the details of that in a moment. She, it says she had been Philip's, his brother Philip's wife, but Herod had married her. This is a really nice way to talk about what happened, okay? Okay, Herod himself, the Herod that we're talking about, Herod Antipas and Philip are some of the sons of Herod the Great. Herod the Great had 10 wives, and he had lots of children by them, and a bunch of his wives were, had the same name. There's Miriam one and Miriam two, and this, uh, Cleopatra one and Cleopatra two, and, and, and then their sons all have, like there's a bunch of Philips, and there's a bunch of, er, there's all these guys with the same name. So it's like the family tree is a mess, but, the, Whatever, these guys are half-brothers, Philip and Herod Antipas. Philip is married to Herodias, who's actually family, too. I mean, they're all sort of cousins and brothers, and so it's ugly. And uh, he didn't just have his way. He had a big affair. And he was uh, married to... Uh, I'm way off the notes here, guys. I'm just telling the story. But he was married to a woman whose name whose name we don't have. And uh, let me find it. Oh, yeah, he was married to Aretas the Fourth's daughter, the king of the Nabataeans, which is a part of the land that's to the east of where all of this story is taking place. And it was like a political marriage. But our Herod has an affair with his brother's wife, he throws away his, his first wife, which makes her dad really mad, and we'll come back to that, too. And he marries his brother's wife. Now, this is absolutely against the law. John's going to bring it up. The, the, there are two, two laws in Leviticus that say you're not supposed to have anything to do with your brother's wife. But anyway, what happens here, let me get back to the, let me get back to the text, okay? It says, Herod sent soldiers to arrest and imprison John. 
That word there is apostolian. It's the word that we get apostles from. What just happened before? Jesus sent his disciples out. And the word that it uses there, it's the same, apostolias, it's, it's the same word. So what we've got now is we've got Jesus sending, now follow me on this, Jesus sends out his disciples so that the word will be spread and be made known to all the people. And yet Herod sends out his people to stop John the Baptist from spreading the truth into the world. We have this juxtaposition of Jesus sending and Herod sending, and it's the same word, and guess what later? One time, this is not gonna be now, but later on, when Jesus' disciples come back to him and after this whole story ends, when his disciples come back to him, one time in Mark, they are called the apostles, the sent ones. The only time in Mark that he uses the word, and it's right after Jesus has sent his disciples. Herod has sent soldiers, and then Jesus is apostles come back. This, I don't think that's a coincidence. We're supposed to think about how Jesus is sending for good and Herod is sending for evil. And this is the picture of, of the whole thing. It says, in the Greek it says, they were sent to seize and bound John in prison. And this would have been unusual too, to put him in prison and just hold him there. Prison was not a place where people served time. People did not serve time in prison in the ancient world. They were held there until their trial, and they tried to have their trial the next day if they could, and there were only four punishments in the Roman world, and it, it was very, justice was quickly uh, administered. You either got whipped with a cat of nine tails, you got banished to the edge of the empire, you were sold into slavery, or you were put to death. And most people, when given the opportunity, they chose death, to be perfectly honest, because they would whip you, they could, the, they could whip you within one lash of death, which was 39 times. But, uh, and nobody really wanted to be a slave, and nobody really wanted to be sent to the edges of the empire. So anyway, and it appears that Herod was just holding John for a long time. Now, as I said, there are two, two reasons for holding him, to silence him and to keep his wife from finding a way to kill him because that's what she wanted to do. It, this takes us back to the story related to Herod and his wife again. It's almost all commentators. If you read it, if you read, interestingly, if you read one of any dozen of commentators about this story, they all say essentially the same stuff because we just have this much history to work with this much history to work with. But, and they almost talk about it in exact terms. And uh, let me look at my notes here. Um, I'm so worked up. I'm just glad to be here talking about it, but let's see. I said that Josephus said he, he, was, he feared him starting rebellion. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's right. By the way, Josephus was writing 60 years after these events, and he was writing for Romans, and so it makes perfect sense that he would talk about these things in terms of Roman politics as opposed to an inner family squabble, but that's neither here, here nor there. Um, on we go, let's see, um, let me look here. I told you that, that there were th three, oh, Herod was one of three sons who was given a tetrarch. When Herod the Great died, he divided his kingdom into three parts. Herod Antipas was given Galilee and Perea, and his brother Philip was given another section, and that's how they ruled. Um, John the Baptist wasn't having any of it, though. And I know I'm, this. I know this is probably kind of confusing. It says that she was what she held a grudge um, against him, John the Baptist because he had said it is against God's law for you to marry your brother's wife. Here it is, Leviticus eighteen sixteen and Leviticus twenty twenty one. Here's what it says. You are not to marry your brother's wife. <laughs> That's exactly what it says. I mean, it's pretty plain. You know, um, Herod himself claimed to be a righteous Jew. He, he claimed to be 
um, somebody who was living the right way and he desired to be called the king of the Jews because he felt he was living a worthwhile life to need this t to get this title from Caesar. But he was also willing to break any Jewish law that got in the way of what he wanted and what he wanted was Herodias. That's what he wanted. He wanted this woman. And John the Baptist was very vocal about this, about being against God's law. And the reason that Herodias, the wife, was upset about it was that she didn't like the fact that John the Baptist was pointing out her sinful nature. She didn't want people gossiping about her or talking about her. She just wanted it all to go away. Um, she's, she is listed multiple times in other historical records and she's referred to as a second Jezebel. She's conniving, evil. She, there's nothing good about this woman. So, like, Herod didn't go take her from a bad marriage. He didn't, like, he wasn't her savior or anything like that. This is all ugly. And this is a family with so much incest and so much bad blood and so much death. And, you know, Herod himself had it figured, the great had it figured out that he'd have all of his sons put to death when he died, and all of the major Jewish leaders put to death. He was so weird about things. He wanted to have all of the high-level, rich Jewish people put to death when he died, so there'd be so many people mourning that everybody think that they were upset about him dying. Fortunately, nobody did that. And he backed off on all of his sons. He let three of them live, but he killed a bunch of them, and he killed some of his wife. I mean, it's just this, this whole family's got trouble, okay? This whole family's got trouble. But it says here, and it's interesting, it says, Herodias bore a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. Yeah, kill him. That's exactly it. But, but without Herod's approval, she was powerless. This is absolutely true. She was powerless to do anything that he did not want to have done. And so she is always looking for some way. We see this, some way to get over on him. And it said, for Herod respected John knowing that he was a good and holy man, he protected him. Again, like I said, it was unusual for somebody to hold someone in prison. But Herod is holding him because he knows he's got a guy who's what? He knew he was, it says straight up, he was good and holy. Now the good is actually in the Greek means just. He was just. And that it means that his judgments were fair. And it says he was holy. That means set apart for God's purposes. And if somebody is set apart for God's purposes and his judgments are fair, and he looks at Herod and goes, what you're doing is against God's law, and you should not be doing this, then Herod knows down deep in the core of his guts that John the Baptist knows what he's talking about. And no amount of sneaking around or acting like it's not a big deal, or saying everybody does it, or whatever he did to get away with this is gonna work because he knows there's a guy in the room next door, literally, who knows what he's talking about. Now, it is um, interesting that he's doing this to keep his wife at bay. Um, yeah, here are my notes. Herodias is pictured in all ancient historical books as a deceitful, conniving woman who would do anything to get her way. Mark tells us that he kept John away from the crowds, but he also kept him safe. And I'm sure he was torn. I'm sure he was torn. It does say that he what? He said he was greatly disturbed whenever he talked to John, but even so, he liked to listen to him. Let me talk about that for a minute. Um, the word that says he was disturbed, it actually means to be in great difficulties. The consensus of the scholars is this word coupled with the much. It says much great difficulties is actually a phrase that speaks to moral weakness. That Herod was well aware of his choices being wrong, 
even by secular standards, I have to be honest, even by secular standards, stealing your brother's wife was a bad deal. People, you don't steal your brother's wife, okay? You just don't. And yet he was struggling, having many difficulties when he listened to John because all of his upbringing, all of the things that you're supposed to be to be a good person, and that's what he wanted to be known as. He wanted to be known as somebody who was worthy of being king of the Jews, and it's just churning inside of him. But it says that he what? He liked to listen to him. Now, I've got to talk about that for a minute, and the reason that he liked to listen to him is this. It was very, very common for high-level how would you call it, um, Roman leaders, that's the best I could think of, yeah, Roman leaders to be open-minded and willing to listen to various philosophers and poets and theologians. And Herod, no doubt, was glad to listen to John out of his desire to have a court that showed his sophistication. And so, he, you know, he'd bring him out and have him talk and every time John would talk, he'd go, you're holding me because you're upset that I'm telling you the truth, which is the fact that you're married to your brother's wife. You stole your brother's wife. You kicked your wife, your first wife out, sent her home. And, and he probably said, you're going to pay for this someday. And he probably made him feel terrible about it. It's just a really um, weird situation that John's in prison to protect him and Herod has him in prison to protect him from whom? His own wife, his own wife. Now I want to tell you something just briefly about the archeology span that they found of this, this place. Um, the, uh, this particular palace was in a place called, it's called Machereus, which is in Pyrea. It's not in Galilee. When they've excavated this, um, it's down kind of near the Jordan River where John the Baptist was preaching. And so they've excavated it, and they found that it had three unusual aspects to it. It had a very large dining hall, clearly for men. Then it had a second dining hall only for women. And right near it, it had its prison where you hold your prisoners. And so this fits right in. Herod's going to have a big birthday party. We'll talk about that probably next time. The, the women never ate with men, by the way. And so Herodias is in the next room, and we see the little girl running back and forth between these two rooms. And then right there next to it is John the Baptist. Can you imagine how, how much it irked? Herodias to know that John the Baptist was in the next room. He's sitting right in there. I want him dead. He's not supposed to be sitting in there. We're supposed to deal with him, and yet he's got him in the room next door, and he keeps dragging him out. My husband keeps dragging him out and having him preach, and every time he preaches, he makes me feel terrible, and I just want to get rid of him. I want to get rid of him. The word grudge is, is a nice one. It's like, she. this is deep, deep anger seething within her is what she had for him. Let's see here. I want to see if there's anything else I should say about this because we're really at a place where if we stop here, then we get right into the birthday party the next time. So let's get it all in our minds. John the Baptist has been brought in to prison to stop him from raising a ruckus among the Jews and to protect him from Herodias who wants to kill him. So they've shut him up, but they're protecting him. Herod is guilt-ridden, and yet he respects John the Baptist. He likes to have him in his court speaking because it's a sophisticated thing, but every time he does that, he feels terrible about things. And Herod himself is dealing with a wife who just wants to kill John. This is a really complicated situation. They're living together, having her having left her husband and him having literally thrown his wife out of the house and, ha and sent her back to her father in a foreign land. Everything is really set up for trouble. It's set up for trouble. 
And now, now we've painted the picture. Next time, I'll get us through the birthday party. And one last thing, I'll say this. Jews didn't celebrate birthdays. So Herod even having a birthday party was him trying to be a sophisticated Roman. And so when we get to that, that'll even be another aspect of the whole story that's just wacky. Anyway, I'm glad we have it. It lets us know that when Jesus and John came into the world, the people who were ruling the world and wanting to claim to be the kings of the Jews had no right whatsoever to hold that position. And when you compare them to Jesus, there is no comparison at all, okay? All right, uh, I know this was a lot of history, but we're going verse by verse, so we gotta talk about it. I'll see you next time. Uh, good to be with you tonight, I'll see you later.